It's been a week, yeah. Okay. to the annual report in there as well. So we'd love for you to kind of read 
that get caught up. And uh, thank you, Deb Bolin, here for compiling that for us uh, as office administrator. She had a lot of work to do this week with prep for the meeting and, and all that, so thank you. All right, that's all I got, folks. Are there are <coughs> other special announcements today. All right. Well, I invite you to rise as we continue with the sharing of the peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's share peace among each other. Peace with you.
mercy. We confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth and the justices of our care. We are already being distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses by taking our sins to the cross. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Rejoice in the good news. Joining our voices with God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need. Lord, we pray especially for all those in our prayer list, for those we name aloud or in our thoughts or our hearts. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Lord God, united as one body in Christ, we pray for the specialized ministry, missionaries, Ted Zimmerman and Tom Hill. We also pray for the churches in the member countries of the Lutheran World Federation, especially the churches of Australia and Interior. Let us pray. Have mercy, Lord God. God. <coughs> Lord God, we pray for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, our synod bishop, Julian Gordy. We pray for our pastor, Michael Jeanette, the staff and ministry leaders of this congregation, and Senator Elizabeth Hawkins. Let us pray. Have Can mercy on God. God. Lord God, we pray for all those serving in the military, guarding our freedom, especially Cody, Drew, Kevin, Logan, Mike, Sean, Erica, Laura Ann, Stephen, and Jonathan. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy on God. O oh Lord God, we bring before you the cries of the sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us, and defend us from ever being <coughs> evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated now for our first reading. sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in the gardens and offering incense on bricks who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils and a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord, because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills. I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. Word of God, word of life. 
moment you remember it's falling down and getting hurt, we might not ever do it again. But we, we see other people skating and, and, and riding their bikes, and, and, they, and then people who help us and teach us, they remind us that even though you might fall down and get a boo boo, it's okay to try to get back up and try again. And that's what Jesus was telling his people that day. He said, you know what, this guy, he was a little scary, but he's not scary anymore. Because Jesus helped him. But the people couldn't understand that. And so Jesus says, you know what? Even though we're going to make mistakes and make mistakes and make mistakes, Jesus says, I love you anyway. I'm going to forgive you anyway. And I want you to go back out in the world and tell people how much God loves you. Because that's what Jesus did with this scary guy. He helped him out and he, and he healed him. And he told the guy, the guy wanted to come to Jesus and say, I want to follow you. Wouldn't, wouldn't you want to follow Jesus? I think I would. But he says, don't follow me. He says, I want you to go back to the town. I want you to tell everybody how good God is. This is Jesus' way of doing things. He picks us up and he sends us on our way. Not so we can be only with God, but that way we can be with all the people and God. And God says, I want you to tell people how much I love them and how much I love you. So when you get back home today, you have to tell everybody you see, God loves you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much, even when it's a bit scary and we fall down. Help us to go back out and tell people of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for coming up. <coughs>
where God is calling us. You know, and that's really, uh, that's part of what Affirm is about, helping to remind our youth and our young adults, and even the adults on staff, that even though there are obstacles, where God calls us, God equips us. As a congregation, as a sort of a living, breathing thing that we are, there are demons in our midst as well. You think about what's holding us back, right? What's holding us back from breaking forth to be who God has called us to be as a congregation? Just like the man held back by demons who call themselves legion, for they are many, this congregation knows what it's like to be held back. Difficulties over the years, whether it's been the pastors and people here in this congregation, but I am blessed to be able to stand before you and say, I don't think the past demons have defined us in our present or our future. If you've not been around a while, this congregation has had turmoil. This congregation has experienced a break. This congregation has experienced people who spouted words of hate. We've had pastors who have had their own troubles and their own demons. But I don't get a sense that that defines the trajectory of this congregation. For I sense hope in our midst. In my life, mentor after mentor have joined me in my path, moving me from a sense of God is nowhere to God is now here. That's the image the theme from a firm, if you stuck all those words together, God is nowhere. And God is now here. It's the same letters, right? God is nowhere. God is now here. I think as a congregation, we have been experiencing those ups and downs. God is nowhere. God is now here. God is no. It's a... It ends up being a cycle. And it doesn't have to be just a just a negative spiral downward. We experience conflict and the hope is that after conflict we experience growth and new life. Challenges for sure, but new life as well. And we ebb and flow between the sense of God is nowhere and God is now here. And we do that as individuals, but we do it as a congregation too, as a living, breathing being. My hope is that as we continue to journey, that the past demons enter that swine herd. <laughs> it's enter the, not the swine herd, the swine. <laughs> the ones that enter other people. <laughs> Whoops. That was, a, that was a mistake. Now we would hope that those demons enter the swine and jump down into the lake and be gone, right? Not bother us anymore. It might scare the people who knew us when. And those memories might linger and cause fear. But my hope is that as we continue to be renewed in Christ, that we continue to sense that God is moving us into healthy directions. I got to hang out in Nashville yesterday for the Nashville Pride event. My family and I there, most one of them had to work, but my family out there um, experiencing the love of Christ in community. It's good to see a couple of churches out there, a couple of companies for which some of our people here work were out there, Nissan and, uh, was Cracker Barrel there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, a couple of paid advertisement. <laughs> now, out there supporting um, but it wasn't long ago that this congregation <clears throat> struggled with the issue of how do we support the LGBTQ plus community. It wasn't long ago that words from people in this congregation, words of hatred towards our Muslim neighbors were spouted. This congregation has taken stands against xenophobia, against racism, against homophobia, and more. We leave 
Take a look at our welcome statement once again to remind yourselves of who we are and who God has called us to be. As God has cleared challenges and demons from our past and helped us to move forward. In this text, we see that Jesus has ultimate power over the forces that would try to hold us back from sharing God's grace. One of my seminary professors, as we uh, talked to us about sacraments, and what is a sacrament? Well, it's this earthly element and God's promise to be present with grace, right? So this combination, that's this kind of a rough definition of it. But in, in Holy Communion, we have the earthly elements with God's promise and God's grace right there in our hands. The same thing with baptism. Uh, the water and the word coming together give us promise and hope. And my theology professor argued, well, maybe we can make room for the third sacrament of, of the, the church. Earthly elements. Blessed with God's grace. Maybe we too are a means of grace. Maybe God's grace flows through us to other people. And that's what I have seen over these last many years here at Advent. That we've been channels, vessels of God's grace for the community. Especially for those on the margins. Jesus healed the man with demons. But the community was caught up in the past history of that man. And they were afraid for they didn't really know what God was up to. After learning, hearing how this man was freed, the people did not celebrate that good news. Instead, they were overwhelmed and hemmed in by the fact that he was a captive. He was held captive by demons, and they couldn't get their minds out of the fact that he wasn't anymore. The same word about being held captive was used by the armies um, in Luke 19, and, it, and it's the same word that is used in Luke 22 when the, uh, the soldiers held Jesus captive before the crucifixion. Freedom is too dangerous a concept for some, too costly. Even though Legion has been expelled from the demoniac, the memory of Legion still controlled that community. The Gerasenes, where people where Jesus were hanging out that day, they begged Jesus to leave them. Right? And so Jesus goes away. He doesn't, notice he doesn't try to change their minds here. He goes and he leaves. And what is the man known as Legion, or the, with the demons of Legion, what does he want to do now that he's been healed? Do you remember that part? What does he want to do? Jesus is leaving, what does he want to do? He wants to go with him. He wants to go with him. But what does Jesus tell him? Go back. Tell everybody what God has done. Remember how Jesus and John he says, you're going to do greater things than these? Right? Jesus on earth can be everywhere every, at, at all times, not, not in the earthly Jesus. And so he spreads the word. He says, tell them what happened. Give them your eyewitness experience that others might believe, not because I said it, but because you said it. And that's part of our story. We are a congregation that is being set free through the power of Jesus. We're a congregation unlike many in the ELCA. When I tell people that we have 53 members from K through 12, it blows their mind. That's not the norm in our church. We, we carry this wonderful gift called the gospel. And when we share it with young and old alike, awesome things happen. <laughs> And we move forward not afraid of the freedom that God has given us. We move forward not being held captive by our past, but by a wide open future. That's our blessing. And that's really what I want to share with you this day, is that this congregation is sort of a, a hero in its own right. Because we've experienced death and resurrection. We experience it individually, but we also have experienced it as a community. And that's a gift. The future. Oh, there you go. There's the Tom Petty song. The future is wide open. <laughs> I think that'll work. <laughs> the future is wide open. God is with us here. 
I definitely experienced God at a firm last week in Livingston, Alabama. But God is here in Murfreesboro. God is here in this congregation. God is here with you individually. So may you believe that God is now here in our synod, in this congregation, and in your life. Amen. Invite you to rise.
And in this meal, Jesus reminds them that he would be. That the covenant, promise, the, new, the renewed relationship between God and the people would come through this meal. That they would move from God is nowhere to God is now. Remember on that night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup, the new covenant in my blood, and for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now together we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God invites you to this table of bounty. Come, for the banquet is ready. Thanks be to God. I'm not 
Peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hey, everybody, real quick, just a, a little change of procedure for us. If you're staying for the meeting, and I'm assuming you are, um, <laughs> if you would please go out to a table out there where we have like sort of a registration, try to tidy things up a little bit, make sure people sign in appropriately. So go ahead and do that, get a stretch, and uh, come on back uh, as soon as you can. Thank you. This is the first.